Thanks for having me here. Um, I bring greetings from the Socialist Workers' Party in Britain. It's a real pleasure to be here. And I realised that I hadn't been here for two years. And, well, not much has happened in the last two years, has it? Um, revolutions, dictators fallen, mass strikes, governments falling. I mean, it's, we're living, aren't we, truly in world historic times. And I think to get a sense of that as a revolutionary, it's... Um, Often history isn't see you don't really appreciate its true impact for decades later. But I think we can all see that we are living through things that are going to be in the history books and studied and analysed as being did the world change in these years? Did something happen? And I think that um, certainly back in Britain, where we have a Tory government which is intent on absolutely crushing working class living standards, that wants to get rid of the welfare state that so many people fought for after the Second World War, that wants to make us pay a really heavy price for the crisis. And I think we've seen a situation really where when uh, Nikos describes what's happening to the stock markets, I mean the ruling class across Europe are absolutely petrified. Panic is just ripping through them because they do not know what's going to happen. And they're on a precipice. And again, two years ago, I remember we talked about how the, the European economies were on a precipice. And actually, you're looking at a crisis that they keep trying to solve, and everything they do to solve it actually only makes this crisis worse. This has become a really protracted, deepening, spreading crisis. But what's interesting about it today is the reason they can't solve it the way they want to today is because of Greek workers. It's not, nothing intrinsic and automatic. It's because a chunk of people have said, we are not going to pay the price that they've been forced into this situation. And this is what's so brilliant, is the, the, the hegemony that austerity is the only way to win through this crisis has been broken. It's been broken on the streets and it's been broken in the ballot box. We used, we used to say in Britain that really to learn how to struggle you had to learn Greek and now we all say across Europe we're all Greeks. We're all Greeks because we have solidarity with the suffering that, that Nikos describes but also with the resistance and the fact that we can actually make a difference because what's happened in the elections has really been amazing. Really the traditional parties have been swept away and not just in Greece which is the most dramatic of the elections but look at what happened in France. Sarkozy, you know, sitting presidents do not just get voted out. He has become the 11th European leader to leave, to go, to be brought down in some way since the crisis began in Europe. And actually you've seen it when you saw what Hollande, who stood on an, you know, a social democratic leader but stood on an anti-austerity ticket, ended up in the second round with 52% of the vote. The radical left getting 12% of the vote in the first round. And even when you look at Germany, Merkel, the heart of the austerity, the heart of uh, neoliberalism, has suffered some of the worst defeats in regional elections in the last few weeks since the late 1950s. Um, if you've seen the Dutch government collapsed last month over fears it couldn't push through a cuts budget. You've seen demonstrations in the Czech Republic bigger than 1989 about the prospect of cuts from their government. And of course in Spain where actually the crisis is deepening and, and some now are taking bets in the um, betting shops in Britain as to whether Spain might be the first to come out of the euro um, and collapse because actually the sense of crisis is there so huge. The indignados, the renewed demonstrations in recent weeks and even in Britain even in Britain, we have finally seen some fantastic struggles with some of the biggest strikes that we have ever seen in generations in Britain, with 2.6 million public sector workers out in November and more mass strikes just two weeks ago and more to come. And we'll talk about that later in the thing. And actually, this is that sense of resistance at every level. But I think it's so important what Nicole said about the suffering of people, because actually, for, for the other side, for the ruling class, for the bankers and the bosses, for them, the crisis is graphs, it's profits, it's numbers, it's calculations, it's statistics. But for us, it's about the human tragedy of people's lost opportunities, even to the extreme of their lost lives. This is a sense of what it really, really means. In Spain, one in four families have nobody working. And when you come to Britain, we are told that the Tories say that they've only put through 20 to 30 percent of the cuts that they want to do. So there's still the vast majority of the attacks are still to come. And yet what they are doing is picking on the most vulnerable. They are the dis people with disabilities are the people that have suffered some of the most in terms of the cuts. Actually, people now who are blind are being told you can get a job, you won't get any, you won't need to get support. Single parents this week. 
Um, on Monday, we're told that only eight weeks' notice, ones who had children of five years old, that they will be taken off single parent benefit and be put onto Job Seekers Alliance because they'll have to go and get a job. People with disabilities, even somebody who was a double amputee, was told, well, if you use a wheelchair, you can get a job, so you're not going to get your full disability benefit because you can go and get a job. But there are no jobs. But this is the extent. So the idea that actually it's the blind, it's the disabled, it's the single parents that cause the crisis and they're the ones having to pay the price is actually people are saying, no, we will not put up with it enough is enough and this is actually something that is getting that is getting stronger the latest thing the Tories wanted to do this week they got somebody to do a report one of their old mates uh, a, a venture capitalist uh, one of the bankers and he brought out this thing saying let's get rid of red tape because we want to grow you know it's not just about austerity it's about growth and getting rid of red tape included the idea that actually bosses could sack at will well hire and fire at will but they weren't going to do much hiring they were just interested in the firing and uh, one of the things that was put in the report but actually in the end got taken out of what was um, put in the newspapers until it was discovered was, uh, was this, by, this is a Tory friend saying this, the downside of the proposal to hire and fire at will is that some people would be dismissed simply because their employer did not like them. While this is sad, I believe it is a price worth paying for all the benefits. Now, this is the attitude of these people, that actually, who cares about the suffering of people? Actually, if we can sack people when we want to, then everything, everything will be okay. And I think that when you see what goes on, I mean, I don't know if people saw um, the struggles that we had uh, just a few months ago, when it was discovered that people with, um, who were unemployed were being forced at the, you know, with the threat of losing their benefits to go and work for free for huge multinational companies like Tesco's. And when we discovered this, we got a campaign together with the Right to Work campaign, and we got down there and we started occupying the shops. And we just said, you know, no slave labour. People should not have their benefits cut. And it was the most brilliant campaign because instantly Tesco's were panicking, like, oh, I, I didn't know they were going to lose their benefits if they weren't going to work here, and we can't have this. And actually, in the end, there was questions asked in Parliament about the Socialist Workers' Party and uh, these militant people taking over these shops and different bosses saying, show some backbone, stand up to these people. And, uh, um, and David Cameron said, oh, well, you know, they have no impact, these people. Um, they're just obsessed and everything else. Actually, what was uh, truly wonderful was that actually uh, it was a campaign we won, and actually nobody is now asked to go and work in Tesco's and threat of losing their wages. And that was just a small protest. And actually, with the sense that actually you can win against these people, they're not strong. And in fact, during this campaign, one of the Tory ministers said, uh, this is part of a broader anti-capitalist trend in our society. No kidding. I mean, you know, but that sense that they understand. Sometimes we can always be obsessed about, you know, are we strong enough? Have we got enough organisation? What about the unions? We haven't fought for a long time. But let's look at their side. They are not, you know, certainly the Tory government in Britain, they're not like Margaret Thatcher. They are not, they haven't got that experience of really being class warriors. And that sense of, of, and also they're in a coalition with Liberal Democrats, you know, so they're already divided as a government. So the, really the sense that you can push them back. And actually, interestingly, watch this space, the scandal about um, the media and police corruption that is rolling around in the background that we keep coming back to in our paper and Socialist Worker, this could actually still bring the government down. I'm not exaggerating, it possibly could bring down Cameron. It's that close, the, you know, the, se the degrees of separation with this scandal that, that is growing. But I think what, what we've seen is, we've seen an economic crisis right back when we saw Lehman's collapse and everything else, that is now fed into a massive political crisis for the establishment parties across Europe who could no longer impose an austerity that they were thinking was the only way to solve the crisis. That in itself has now fed into an even greater economic crisis, which Nikos described, because the stock markets are going crazy because they're worried about a left-wing government coming in in, in Greece. And so that situation where the political feeds into the economic is knitted together to actually cause huge instability and volatility in the, um, in, the, uh, in the system. And I think that when you look at what they're trying to do, you've seen a situation where now Greece only represents about 2% of the uh, economy in Europe, and yet actually if it goes down, it threatens to bring down the whole edifice. That is the fragility of the system. That is the possibility of, um, of that they can't hold it together. Now, we know there's nothing inevitable about how this crisis will be solved. We know that capitalism can get out of any crisis if we are prepared to pay the price. That's how they can do it. And actually, there's other dangerous ways that this crisis could be solved. We saw the, ele the um, election and success of Golden Dawn, an openly Nazi 
organization. We saw Marine Le Pen and the vote that she got in France. You know, those are dangerous sort of signs, if you like, of how despair can actually turn from resistance into, into hard right politics. But actually, therefore, but for us, I think we have to look and say, what about our side and what are we doing and how, how we can make a difference? I mean, in Britain, we've seen it in a little way, where we saw George Galloway, um, who many of you will know here, who won an astounding victory in Bradford in a by-election. Astounding victory. It was absolutely superb. He fought, he fought on the ticket of against austerity, against student fees, against tuition fees, and, and against cuts and for pensions, and saying there's always money for war, but there's not money for people with disabilities and all the rest of it. We ourselves, a member of the Socialist Workers' Party, stood in the for a, uh, Michael Levellet, re regained his local seat as a, as a councillor, as a socialist councillor in Preston. So small gains, as well as the massive strikes that we've had um, in, in, um, over, the, over the last year. And we hope to have another mass strike of public sector workers in June, but we have come in what looks like a hot October. We have a situation where the TUC has called another mass demonstration last March. Half to three quarters of a million workers took to the streets. We hope it will be at least that in October. We're looking at it across the whole of the education sector looking like a shutdown in October. We're looking at a student demonstration to take place on the anniversary of two years since Millbank, if you remember, when we sacked the Tory party uh, conference, uh, Tory party headquarters. Not quite as good as what the Egyptian did to their ruling party headquarters, but we did our very best. But that situation where actually we could be looking at, a, at an autumn where really these struggles are not going to go away. But what I want to finish off by saying is we cannot allow this crisis to be solved by the rich and the privileged in their summits, in their palaces, deciding what to do, because they are like the first-class passengers on the Titanic. They will stomp on us, they will push us out of the way, and they will lock us down in order for them to get into their lifeboats and survive. And this is the question that's posed to all of us today, is the solution doesn't lie with them, the solution lies with the millions, literally millions of people who have taken to the streets, who've voted, who've taken action, who've occupied, who've been part of revolutions, who've been part of the Occupy movement, which came out of nowhere. And they have not fallen for the spin that they have to pay. They have not fallen for this idea that it's logical. Of course, we have to cut disability benefits because there's a crisis, because there's this great budget deficit, because people know the budget deficit came because we bailed out the banks. People know that a bailout for Greece doesn't mean a bailout for Greek workers. It means a bailout for the European banks. That's the only reason they're trying to keep Greece in the Eurozone, because they're scared that their debts will not be paid. They're scared the banks will go down. And I think what is amazing about what's happened really recently, and it is goes to what that Tory minister said, because sometimes they can see what's going on, is that sense that actually the crisis is chipping away at the legitimacy of the system for people, at the idea of the credibility that capitalism, that the markets will always have a solution. What the crisis has done is made people question this and made people say, actually, it's not true. It is chaotic, it is irrational, it is cruel, and therefore we have to be looking for something else. They have watched banks get bailed out with public money. They have watched people suffer, and it's raising big questions. I don't know if, if you're getting the same thing here, and I'm sure with what's happening in Quebec with the students and the challenge that you've seen on such a mass scale, that actually this is something that is infecting right across the globe, isn't it? There is an arc of resistance. We may all be at different parts of it. The crisis doesn't hit everywhere in the same intensity, at the same speed. It's accelerated in Greece. It's catching up elsewhere but that sense of we're being faced with this and I think that therefore our public sector workers that marched in the streets in the um, in the big strikes last week are the in the same struggle as the indignados in Spain in the same struggle as the Egyptian workers in the same struggle as those occupying workplaces in Athens and taking to the streets in Quebec and this is the kind of action that we're going to need everywhere if we're going to stop the the bosses and the bankers doing what they want to do to us this is the sort of action that can stop them in their tracks but actually this is also the sort of action that can say, we can do more than just stop the attacks. We can actually offer an alternative. We can say there's another way that we can run society that doesn't need to be run like this. We don't need to just keep coming back decade after decade with more crisis, more attacks, that actually collectively we can offer something else. We can offer up a socialist society. And for me, however severe the crisis looks, the potential for that, the possibility that that can become a reality in our lifetimes, to me, seems greater than ever today.